So in this video, what we are going to do is we're going to make a parallax object file from scratch, particularly a missile. Um, now I should qualify what I mean by from scratch because as you can see, uh, I've laid out a lot of groundwork already. I have the geometry of the missile on the left here, and I have the UV map and the texture on the right. Um, now I'm using Blender. So this tutorial is going to cover how to go from Blender to a parallax object file, but uh, the process is somewhat similar for all uh, of the modeling softwares. So for Wings 3D, uh, for um, 3D Max, uh, whatever modeling software you're comfortable with, stick with that modeling software. But if you are new to modeling and you're undecided on what uh, modeling software to go with, I suggest Blender for two reasons. It's free and it's pretty dang good and it's open source so there's a lot of um, there's a lot of tutorials and help material and stuff uh, online uh, to help you get started with modeling. Alright, so let's say that we have uh, finished the actual modeling part and we want to get this thing in the game. Um, okay, so we want to export to a parallax object file. All right, before we do that, a couple things. Uh, make sure that uh, all your normals are facing outward. So uh, the normals are like uh, little fence posts that are perpendicular to every face. So if I go to the buttons menu and I go to draw normals, I see all these blue sticks. Make sure all your blue sticks are facing outward. Otherwise, FSO won't know what the inside is or what the outside is is every mesh completely enclosed. If there is a, um, let's say that this object is in space and it's filled with air. If it leaks air, it's not completely enclosed. So let's say, um, let's say I delete these vertices here. I see a big gaping hole in the model. So no, no holes. Otherwise FSO will have a hard time understanding what uh, your object is. All right. So um, are all sub-objects labeled properly? What that means is uh, in uh, the uh, buttons menu under link and materials you see uh, ME cylinder and then you see OB uh, this could be cube or cylinder label that detail zero. All uh, main sub-objects in your uh, parallax object files will be labeled detail zero. This is the only sub-object that's going to be in our parallax object file so we label this detail zero. Okay. Uh, so, whoops. So, uh, are my objects facing in the right direction is uh, the last point here. And uh, this one is because uh, the uh, red arrow represents the Y axis, and the Y axis in Blender is the Z axis in uh, FSO. And uh, if you have this object pointed away from the red arrow, you are pointed in the right direction. Point it any other direction, it'll look weird when you're firing missiles because you'd be firing missiles sideways. All right, so uh, we have all of that. We're ready to export, uh, but there is one little issue. If you go and you open any file in PCS2 and you hit File Save, you can see all the supported formats. Uh, so you can see uh, Parallax Object File, PMF File, COB, SCN. Uh, but the all-important DAE file is what we're interested in. But notice there is no uh, .blend file in here in the supported format. So we have to export a file to a DAE, a call it a DAE, and then we import the DAE using PCS2. Okay, so in order to get a call it a exporter for Blender, it's a Python script. Um, so I've put a link in the description to uh, the actual exporter and uh, a link to a little tutorial for how to install it because it is not a trivial, trivial installation. It is a Python script. Okay, so um, assuming you've installed that, you've got, uh, you go to File, Export, and uh, call it a 1.4. Do not export call it a 1.31. Export call it a 1.4 and um, you get a little uh, a bunch of options and buttons here this triangles export as triangles must be checked because FSO does not understand what a square is what a square face is to FSO is two triangles so what this exporter does is it converts everything into triangles for you so FSO understands what your object is 
Okay. So export the file. You can go to the browser here. You can press P to go all the way up and export the file to uh, our mod data models. And I called I called this model uh, the fire goblin. Okay. So we export that. See export is successful. And then we go and we see in our mod data models. There's the DAE file. Okay, now one thing to note is that this is a text file. A DAE file is a text file and you have a lot of control over uh, the actual file itself because you can manipulate the text. Uh, I, I personally don't understand, I see a whole bunch of numbers here, I personally don't understand uh, DAE files in the text format, so let's open this, uh, but you know there's a lot of powerful things you can do with it. Um, but for our purposes here, let's open uh, PCS2. Let's open the uh, DAE file in PCS2, and we can see that our missile is here, and then we can see that our texture is here. So all our missile is is a sub-object and a texture. There's no actual editing that we have to do in PCS2 because all missiles are sub-objects and textures. So the only purpose of even bringing it into PCS2 is so that we can save it as a parallax object file. So once we've done that, we see uh, that we have our Fire Goblin parallax object file in data models. So we're done, right? Okay. The other thing to make sure is that you have under data maps that you have uh, the um, that you have the uh, texture that corresponds to your actual parallax object file because the texture is not in your parallax object file and this is a, uh, a beautiful looking texture um, but more importantly it's a DDS file and the reason why you should use DDS files for your maps is because it is the most efficient uh, type of file uh, that FSO uh, can support uh, so that means higher frame rates for players um, and, and less sluggish gameplay. Good things all around. Use DDS unless you have a really good reason otherwise. Okay, so uh, the other thing is to make sure that this texture is a power of 2 and is a square texture. Now what I mean by that is 2 pixels width by 2 pixels height or 4 pixels width by 4 pixels height. 16 pixels width by 16 pixels height. Keep multiplying that by 2 and then you're going to go all the way to 1024 width by 1024 height. And then, tw and then if you multiply that by 2 you get 2048 width by 2048 height. 1024 by 1024 and 2048 by 20 2048 are uh, the uh, popular, the most popular dimensions for DDS textures. If you do not use a square, uh, a square power of two, FSO will pretend like your te your texture is not there and your object will be invisible. Okay, so um, so we've got that. All we have to, all we need is a table reference. Once we have the parallax object file and the texture, all we need is a table reference. So we called this parallax object file the fire goblin and uh, for a missile all I have to do is replace um, I, I could replace any missile because all missiles are treated the same they're just sub objects and textures so if I replace the rock I here with all I do is rename it as fire goblin and then I save that then all I have to do is test it and see if it worked so I'm going to go ahead and open that right now. Um, whoops. Right. So so all all missiles like I'm going to I'm going to repeat myself. All missiles are treated the same uh, in terms of tech in terms of table references. That's not true for ships or uh, capital ships. So um, that's the reason why I'm able to just simply rename it without even editing the tables. Uh, we'll see that's not the case in um, for for other missiles. Um, and so all I did was I changed the model file. I changed the look of the rock eye to a different model file. So let's see that. There we go. So we can see the fire. So we can see that we've just replaced the model. That's all we've done. It still has the same trail and and all of that. So that's all this video is going to cover. Stop interrupting me, Alpha 2. Um, <laughs> okay, well, in the next video, what we're going to cover is um, we're going to cover uh, actually editing something in PCS2. So that's something to look forward to in the next video.